Well, hi, fellow uh, denizens of YouTube land. I have made a bit of a purchase recently and I wanted to just talk about it because, uh, well, frankly, because I'm selfish, because I've listened very carefully as I've uh, looked through reviews and online YouTube uh, uh, information about this amplifier and I realised that there's absolutely nothing left unsaid about it. I think it's been about the most reviewed, most covered amplifier ever. So, um, so I have listened to the complete lack of need out there and ignored it. So you have my apologies for that. I am, of course, talking about the Boss Katana. Now, the funny thing about this is that uh, I wasn't really in the market for an amplifier. I have a, an MX-5, uh, a Headrush MX-5 um, modeling pedal which is just down here at my feet. It's what I use for all my online uh, recordings. And I just find it fantastic. Its amp modeling is great. Um, and there is a whole side note there about why the Headrush MX-5 gets criticized for not having enough amp models in it, you know, compared to a Line 6. But I, in my experience, you know, I, uh, which is limited, I'll admit, um, I, I find two or three amp models that I really like, and in practice, it, it really comes down to no more than that. Most of the time, it's one. I'm currently in love with its uh, emulation of an orange 30 watt valve amp. Uh, I just uh, an AD 30 something like that. I I just love it. Absolutely love it. However, what I've been using to to make it into a real amp for the the rare occasions when I have to actually play my guitar in a live setting uh, is the Headrush um, the Headrush speaker again i mustn't allow myself to get started on this this is the headrush speaker bit of a weightlifting feat here it's very heavy this is a, a wedge um, pa cabinet which as far as i'm concerned is badged and branded by headrush it looks absolutely identical to one that you'll see online uh, by Alessis as a drum monitoring cab. They both make the same really annoying claim that it's 2,000 watts. I thought that stuff went out in the 80s when we talked about peak powers. You know, they may as well just say it's 3,000 watts. You know, it, it's just it's nonsense, absolute nonsense. It's an 8-inch speaker, PA speaker. Works well with the headrush. Honestly, I've got no great complaints. It sounds fine. But when I've tried to use it for live use, it's a bit strident. It's very directional, perhaps because it's a small 8-inch speaker. So when I listened online to the quite astonishingly talented and, and uh, likeable John Nathan Cordy, he, he seems to go between uh, uh, liking boutique valve amps and thinking that they bring back real joy. And then he'll play his modelling stuff. He's obviously a real modeler uh, and, and digital guy at heart as well. And then he'll say, oh, I don't need anything else. You know, I, I miss the excitement of a big, you know, a big sound from a genuine old or, or um, high quality valve amp in the room. But actually, it's not always practical. And he did a review which actually was one of the things that, that triggered my thinking. He said, basically, a Boss Katana. Boss Katana, I think 100, he had Mark II. He said, I don't need anything else. He played through it. It sounded beautiful. I am absolutely convinced that if someone had played me his recording blind and said, is that a you know, Fender valve amp or is it a, you know, is it a Boss um, Katana? I wouldn't have known. I simply wouldn't. And I think that's one of the great... Uh, um, truths uh, that's uncomfortable for us all. But if you would listen to like Anderton's TV reviews, which are fantastic when they do blind tests, it, it's so often so impossible to tell the difference between good modelling amps and, and real amps. So why did I then go and buy a Katana? Well, to get this story finished, uh, the amp I did turn to from time to time just to play a an amp in the room was a Vox AC10 valve preamp, valve uh, output stage. Love it. Fantastic, but it's. Uh, I picked it because it sounds great when you're, you know, finger picking. Because I tend to a kind of a clean, you know, I'm more of a folky style guitarist. Um, but it was really difficult. I, I picked it up a few times in the last couple of months, plugged something in, and found it slightly muddy, too much sparkle, sometimes too boomy. You know, it depends on which room it's in. It's a fairly, it's a fairly eager, almost uncontrollable amplifier at times. And I, of course. Um, uh, I think you can see behind me, I, I, I very much love my Gretsch Electromatic. 
you can't not get feedback in a small room with a Vox AC10. And it's not just the power or, or the, the, the volume from its 10-inch speaker. It's, it's something in the uncontrollability of it. It seems to just have a feedback loop around it acoustically that, that, that it's hard to put your finger on, but hard to control. So, Jonathan, uh, uh, John Nathan Cordy said, I can't really see beyond the Boss Katana. It's got all the software for programming it and all that. Um, and, and he uses it, you know, he deep dives into that to show you what you can do with it. But what he said, which made my ears uh, 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 pick up, was that um, it's got a power amp in. So basically, this uh, Boss Katana is <laughs> a powered speaker cabinet. And he's often said that he feels that you get just as good a sound from a, a, a proper guitar speaker cabinet without horns, without you know tweeters and all that high pitch stuff. So this is a Boss Katana cabinet, 50 Mark II. It's got uh, a 12-inch speaker, and uh, that gives, I think there's something magical about 12-inch speakers if you've only got one in a cabinet. It seems to give you the, 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 the kind of fullness of the bottom end that a guitar can so easily lack. And I can plug my head rush into it, and it will feel like I've got an effects pedal and I've got a proper combo, but I can get the head rush effect. To my surprise, I brought it home, pulled it out of the box, set everything on, you know, 12 o'clock, basically. You know, didn't turn on any of the effects except reverb. And this happens. <laughs> you an amazing clean sound. It does all the modeling stuff, but it gives you such a usable clean sound. fallen in love with it and I know it's been reviewed to death but I just wanted to say this actually sounds so good and so easy to use every guitar in. My Gretsch doesn't feed back, it sounds controlled and sweet and that's everything at 12 o'clock. I haven't adjusted the EQ, I'm on the, you know, the, the bridge, no I'm not, <laughs> I'm on the neck and middle position of the phase sound on a, on a, a standard Strat and I'm finding it so usable, I just love it. Now, that takes me to another point. I always think the real test of a good amp is not whether it has got brilliant distortion sounds or great high gain sounds. Because I think that most people will use pedals and most people will use all sorts of uh, modification to the sound. So what really matters is does your amp have a good clean sound? And Boss, who have been making pedals and making uh, um, their uh, very clean uh, you know, cube amps. I, mean, I remember hearing Billy Bragg live probably in the late 80s or early 90s playing through a, a, a cube and thinking, I just don't see how a, a guitar could sound any better than that. It's just so versatile. And they've done the jazz chorus, uh, hundreds, you know, high, you know, high powered, lots of headroom, wonderful uh, uh, clean sounds. Boss know how to make amps. And here's the thing. You don't need to use the software at all. If you simply, and we turn this around a little bit, if you simply use the the, the top panel, <laughs> stringing swap here, uh, strap, the top panel here has all the controls you need. It quite cleverly, let me tilt this for a moment, it quite cleverly uses where my pinky is, 
there. Yeah, there. Dual concentric control, so you've got boosts. So if you want dirt, you can get dirt there. And you can, you know, it's got an emulation, for example, of a blues driver, uh, which I think is very popular as a, a boss um, pedal for adding a bit of fire. Uh, you've got all your modulation stuff, your phasers, etc. You've got your, um, uh, your your delay, which actually I think is switched on just now. And it's got a tap tempo. So if I just go one, two, three, four, you'll hear that. Yeah, there we go. So easy to use, incredibly easy to use. If you want that dirt thing, now you've got you know your crunch channel. I'll turn that on. And immediately you're getting There we go. You're getting a little bit more fire. I think it's actually too much for me, but for lots of people that would be probably ideal. Actually, I find with the katana, if you take the gain down a lot in that, that becomes way more usable because the gain naturally in its crunch channel is quite high, but take it down a bit. Katana, honestly, you guys have done a great job. I can use that for everything now. I don't actually particularly intend to go into the software. My MX-5 gives me all the modeling and tone control I need. As long as I can use the controls on the panel and I can tap into the 50 watts of power uh, as, as a power amp uh, uh, output for my, my head rush, I'm a happy guy. So um, don't hesitate to get one of these. They're really cheap for what you're getting. And uh, other than the fact that I think its logo is tacky and a bit, uh, I don't know, ill-considered, it just, you know, it's it's from the whole school of thought that everyone's got to be spider or katana or something aggressive and, you know, <laughs> and, and tough. Um, it, it's pretty much a perfect amp. Lightweight, I'm going to presume it will be reliable, and if it's not reliable, it's almost disposable in price. So, love it. Um, you can go through every kind of sound and effect you could gig with this without ever even bothering with a front end. Just simply turn on uh, the clean channel and then put on the blues driver or whatever. And uh, I don't think any blues player would have a difficulty, uh, for example, um, you know, uh, gigging with all of that. So, and you can get foot pedals and things for it. I'm not going there. I just need it as a great power amp. But what fun it's giving me at home. And the last thing I forgot to mention is that you can turn the power down. The last control uh, along in this here is... Um, is a power from half a watt so that you can use it at night without waking anyone up uh, through to 25 watts, which is half power and, of course, full 50 watts. Um, it, it's got everything. It's a steel. It's no accident that everyone loves them. Don't be put off by the snob value of wanting something valve or fancy. Get that by all means if you like. But if you want something just reliable to have in your bedroom uh, that will give you every sound that you could possibly need. That's it. Okay, thanks. See you soon.